Hey y'all, welcome back. I'm Shayna Searcy and I'm so excited to uh, learn something new with you all today. So I am going to be opening a brand new box of supplies um, from Paul Rubens. A uh, representative from Paul Rubens reached out to me and asked if I wouldn't mind trying out um, a set of their oil pastels. These are specifically um, meant for or designed this particular line for florals. Um, and they are oil pastels. I am not an oil pastel artist necessarily, but I love giving supplies a try. And I'm going to be doing, uh, opening this with you, kind of going through what I got, and then also trying to create a piece with these. So let's get started. All right, first and foremost, they did send this to me for free. I didn't pay for this box. Um, of oil pastels it is much bigger than I thought it was going to be it's 72 colors uh, I'm gonna break the plastic seal here so we can start to get into this um, but it came very nicely wrapped quickly shipped to me and like I said I thought when they said oh we'll send you a box of pastels to try um, and just give us your honest review on them. Um, I thought it would be like a tiny little box like this. This is huge. Look at this. So 72 colors, um, oil pastels, kind of a beautiful box here. Here's the top. Just set this aside. I had to like clean off my desk to make space for this. All right, so it has a booklet inside. And um, it has a list of a bunch of their other sets, 144 color set here, um, and some instructions on how to use them. So it goes over instructions. Maybe we'll use these or follow these in order to create a piece. I mean, I have used oil pastels before, but I don't regularly create with them as an artist. Um, Interesting. So I'm looking at this is a 48 color palette, the 36 color palette, the 60 color palette, and the 144 color palette. But there is no description of the 72 color palette. So this one is 72 colors, um, but all of their palettes in the little book here only have different numbers of colors. So we will. Oh, and there are different. So these are different sets. Basic color set, the pearlescent set, the mac macaron pastel set. So maybe there's something else inside. Let's keep going. All right, so a nice, beautiful foam layer here to protect them. And then here they are. Look at so many colors. How pretty. Ugh, brand new art supplies are always so pretty and so fun. So lots of different variety of colors here. Uh, which is really awesome and then let's see how do I even choose where to start um, so the oil pastel they are labeled it's very tiny the camera probably cannot see it with the colors on the side all right so these are our colors let's get into creating something all right, so here we are. I wasn't sure what paper exactly to use with oil pastels. I have used them before in combination. I haven't used them for many years um, on their own, but um, I have used them before in combination with watercolors as a mixed media to add highlights and things like that to a painting. And maybe we'll try some more of that in another video. But today we're just gonna be using the oil pastels and we are gonna be doing a floral painting. But back to the paper, I wasn't sure what to get. I did read online, it's recommended not to use something very textured, um, like a cold press or a rough surface in watercolor paper. But if you have hot press paper, that would work well. So I happen to have this Etcher sketchbook that I ordered many, many months ago, a couple years ago maybe, that was hot press. I used it one or two times and I haven't really touched it since. I'm not a fan of hot press paper for watercolor, but maybe I will find a new love and use for it with these oil pastels. Okay, 
So first things first, I'm going to swatch out all of the pastels. I wanna make sure I know exactly what the color is gonna look like on the page before I put it on the page, just like with your watercolor paints. So I'm gonna go through all 72 of these one by one and put a little tick in my um, sketchbook here. And that way I can always reference it later on when I'm creating my floral pieces. Now, one thing I've noticed about these already is that they're super creamy and they leave a lot of pigment on the page with just a little bit of pressure. So you can really build up the texture and almost create impasto-like texture across the surface, which I really love, just like traditional oil painting um, where you can build up that texture in like an impressionist um, type of style. So I'm just going to rearrange the colors here a little bit. Uh, so the one thing I wish this box did have was a color guide um, for the full box uh, included with it, which it didn't have. So um, I'm not going to take the time to write down all the colors or the names or anything like that with these ticks, but just so I'll keep everything in the same order and that way I can follow along. So I'm gonna get right into it and start just putting these down on the paper. I'm gonna build lightest to darkest, and you can see here how creamy they are and how easily I'm not applying much pressure at all. The more pressure you apply, the more you can get. And you can see I'm just smudging it with my fingertip right now. I am gonna bring in a, um, a smudging tool. Um, you could also use a Q-tip or a paper towel. Um, there's no really wrong way to smudge or blend, I guess is a better word for it. Um, with your fingertip, you don't have as much control. You really have to um, use it in a larger space. So with a blending stump or stick, you'll have a little bit more control and I'm just building up darker colors and darker layers. So you can see you don't have finite control with these because they don't have a fine point or a tip on them. I'm using the edge of the pastel itself um, to create um, finer lines, but you can't get too defined. And then I'm gonna use my blending stump here. What I did learn along the way using my blending stump is that after I use a particular color or I'm blending a certain area of a particular color like this, you have to clean it off if you're switching colors or areas that you're working on and they're different colors. So you do have to like pull any extra um, oil pastel uh, pigment off the end of the blending stump. Otherwise, you're just going to smudge it into the next area. So keep that in mind. That definitely caught me by surprise once or twice where I forgot to clean it off. So just like a brush um, when you're painting, you have to clean it off between colors. So I'm going to go through these a little bit more quickly here um, just to get something really nice um, and fulsome out on the page for you pretty quickly so we can see what we can do with them. So working lightest to darkest, I found works really well with these. And also not necessarily layering all your colors, but leaving the lightest parts light um, and placing colors next to each other that you might want to blend together, but not necessarily over top of each other uh, can work really well. And then when you work from lightest to darkest on the top surface, what you're able to do, which I'm gonna do momentarily, is also pull color off using like a scratching technique to reveal the lightest color beneath. Um, so that will give you um, a really interesting way to build texture and line within your piece. So I've got a lot of texture going on right now, but I'm also gonna use this scraping or scratching technique that's going to help me build up even more. One thing to note is that if you are not someone who likes to get your hands dirty at all in the art making process, these might not be for you. So you could see there, I do have to kind of wipe my hands off regularly 
Um, you could probably wear gloves too with this if you were really worried about that, but you do have to be careful because you can also get it on the sides of your hands and then you start to smudge it on other places on your page, which you can see I have already done. I am already making a mess there down below, but that's okay because I'm just practicing here and seeing what the material can do. This isn't a final or finished piece. Now, creating these centers was my absolute favorite part of this flower. I am just stippling on, so basically just pushing the oil um, pigment onto the page while I built these up and just adding darker and darker colors as I go up. And then I'm going to apply that scratching technique once again after I blend them a bit. And it creates this really rich texture um, with lots of depth and lots, you can see there, it's raised right off the page. Um, so these I really, really enjoyed making and I look forward to making more of them. And look at this, the scraping creates these beautiful textured highlights that really resonate with that type of flower and the texture that exists in real life in that flower. So that was a lot of fun to do. So here I just pushed some darker pigment on and I'm actually using my blending stick to pull out um, some of the darker color in thinner lines there. So that's a way I got a little bit more control over thin or finely detailed lines in a darker color was by just putting a little lump of it in the center where I wanted it and pulling it out with the tip of that finer pointed blending stick. Now the stems on this I really struggled with. Um, I tried to go from lightest to darkest, but I ended up um, struggling with the control here as you can see, and my stems get really fat and chunky and don't really um, aren't really doing what I want them to do. So I have to practice some more with that. What I end up doing is I try my best to make these stems work. They don't work, so I blend them out into kind of a hazy background, and then I try again by putting darker colors on top of that. So you'll see that here. Um, but it's all about the learning curve. Sometimes you're just not sure what you're capable of um, or what the supplies or materials are capable of. So you have to give some things a try. And ultimately, I was happy with it in the end. So you can watch me kind of go through that struggle here with this particular stem on the right. Um, I tried everything I could to kind of make it look right and I just couldn't get there. So now I'm going to give the sky a little treatment and kind of fill in the background there. Uh, one thing I did notice is you do have to sometimes clean off your pastels before moving on. So you can see my white had a little few little dots of red on the end still or pink on the end. So you do have to clean those off um, before applying it again. So you might have to wipe the end off with your paper towel. So I'm just mixing a whole bunch of blues here to kind of see what I can do. I'm going to blend them together with a paper towel. Um, I'm going to add more layers of white on top to see what that looks like. Ultimately, I get to where I need to go um, or to a fun kind of looking whimsical sky, but not necessarily exactly what I intended when I first set out, um, but I'm not really sure what I intended. I was just kind of playing my way through this piece. So I do revisit my stems here now that I've kind of given them that nice uh, blurry background. I'm going to go over them again with a dark color, trying to be really careful not to get too thick. So very little um, pigment right on the edge of the actual oil pastel and then blending it out with my blender. So this one I went kind of darkest to lightest. I put the darkest color on the bottom and then a few highlights on top and then add a little bit more dark um, green in a third green color just to give them some dimension. And these are the 
first of three flowers that I'm going to do. So I'm going to, after this, um, I'm also going to dapple a little bit with a or lavender type flower with some purple buds and also a classic rose. So stay tuned for that. Let's take a look. Um, but yeah, these are super fun to play with so far. So I'm really excited to have them and have the opportunity to create with them. So overall, what did I think of these Paul Rubens oil pastels? Well, I don't have a lot to compare it to because I'm not an oil pastel artist, but I absolutely love trying these out and dabbling in a new medium. And I'm definitely going to be creating more works with these. We'll see if any of those end up as videos on my channel later on. But these were really wonderful. They were super creamy, easy to build up texture really great to um, color choices, lots of different colors to choose from, from the subtle um, light pastel colors to some more vibrant, rich, heavy colors. Um, it was really great. I had everything I needed at my fingertips um, in this uh, particular box for florals. So thank you, Paul Rubens, for sending these to me. And thank you, everyone watching, for trying them out with me. Don't forget to check out the link in the description for uh, links to these particular oil pastels online, as well as my social media and my Studio Crew Classroom links. And happy painting, y'all. Thanks again. Bye-bye.